Hello and welcome, good Monday makers. It's time for another episode of our Build Roundup. As always, we've got some really great builds, and I'm joined with Dave. Good Monday, everybody. Hope everybody had a great weekend and is uh, starting their week off with some builds with us. We appreciate you stopping by. If you're in the chat, drop down there and say hello. We'd love to hear from you. But we've got some great builds. We're going to be checking out a, let's see here, we got a garden trellis, we've got a pergola. We've got Dust Collection Arm. There's some really cool things. There's a lot of YouTube videos this week we're going to look at. We've had a lot of builders in the community share uh, their projects through video on YouTube, which is always cool to see. So let's jump right in and check them out. I hear some feedback. Is that coming from me or? Okay. My bad. That was me. Oh, yeah. No worries. Way to blow it on a Monday morning. <laughs> hey, if it's, it's, it's not Monday, if there's not, you know, stuff happening. There's stuff happening. Yeah. But everybody's good. We got coffee, best way to start, and uh, now we just got to look at some builds, so let's jump right into it. First up, we've got this is a video shared by Nature's Always Right, and this is Steven, and he's been working on several different projects, and most recently he shared his trellises that he's working on for his garden, and he did a whole video about it, included kind of an overview of everything, he talked about Maker Pipe, which we appreciate, and then he uh, kind of dove into his trellis design and then also broke down exactly how to make it. But then he even dives into the whole like pruning process and how to train tomatoes to actually use a trellis, which is really cool. And I think a, a cool thing that he incorporated into uh, the, this kind of a video. It, um, it's so awesome to see like a build in full season, right? Mm -hmm. Like usually we see builds and they're like at the beginning of the <laughs> season, the trellises are, and there's just right. dirt. <laughs> and <laughs> he's got an amazing garden. And it's, uh, you know, in full swing. So it's really awesome to see. Yeah. yeah. You can see he's had it up for a while. I think he was trying some different things. But as Dave was saying, he's <laughs> got quite the growth and looks like it's it's working great. Uh, but the design, I think, is really simple. And it's just a really great way to start kind of any, any trellis. He did do something a little different here in some of the corners. So I'm going to drop this kind of quality down a bit. So hopefully it'll buffer better. Uh, but he did like the classic you know, four corner, 90 degree connector uh, kind of design. But I, in some of them, he used T connectors side by side. Um, and he's got a pretty good channel, right? Definitely mm -hmm. uh, a good following on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. He, do, he does a lot of great videos and uh, all kinds of things about gardening. And let's see. How many, how many views does it have so far? He's at 8,500 views. Nice. Yeah, posted it on Friday. Yeah, I really appreciate that, posting that. Yeah. You can see here he's got the 90-degree connectors in the corners, and that's a really great way to start any kind of trellis build because you can basically, you know, a lot of garden beds are made of wood, or even if they're, you know, steel, or even if they're not a garden bed or not a raised bed at all, or just, you know, a garden bed that's on the ground. Uh, I mean, I guess they're all on the ground, but, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you can use the 90 degree connectors to kind of create a rectangle and kind of match the shape of a garden bed and then right to whatever size you want. Right. I and mean, you, it's just cutting the pipe different. Mm -hmm. And you customize the height with the vertical pipes and you customize the width and then the length, um, you know, with those pipes there. And that's kind of what he goes into and, and kind of explains how it works and says, finally, a tomato trellis that lasts forever. Yeah. I think he's used PVC in the past. Uh -huh. Um, and as you can see, that's a lot of weight, and he's got a ton of plants. So the more that they they grow, it's just going to keep adding more and more weight. Um, but you can see, let's see, bending the toma. You ever seen these toma hooks? No. They apparently hook onto the pipe, and they have a string spooled up. Uh huh. And I guess they, I mean, I guess you can just easily adjust them up and down. I'm not too familiar with them. I mean, is it something specifically for gardening? Yeah, I think it's specific for tomato. Oh, okay. Because um, he, he adds those all around his trellis, and then that, and then he goes into the the uh, kind of process of how you train and prune tomatoes. And nice. I, and I imagine he's you know training it to that trellis, which is something I'm not much of a gardener, but that makes a lot of sense. You know, instead of having just running wild. Uh, you know, being able to train them to to use the trellis that you built makes a lot of sense. Oh, I can see he's, <laughs> he's got a whole garden. He doesn't have a garden bed. He's got basically, I mean, it is a garden bed, but it's, you know, on the ground. <laughs> I don't right. know how else to say that. 
because yeah. <laughs> they're all on the ground. But you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's in the ground. Right. How did he? How did he stake it? Did he just drive the conduit into the ground, I or did he not cover that? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember it's, exactly. It's cool. Yeah, I know it's not loading the best, but just but curious. He probably did the method where you just get a metal stake from from Lowe's or Home Depot. They sell like an 18 inch stake, and it fits inside a three quarter inch EMT really well. You just hammer it to the ground and slide conduit over it. We'll actually see somebody that did that here in a minute in another build, um, but I'm pretty sure that's the method he did. Uh, or as Dave was saying, you could bury it a little bit. We've seen people use flanges on the bottom, and then they bury the flange. Uh, so those are a couple of methods that you can do to, to kind of secure it in the ground, make sure it's steady and, and going to hold it well. Rebar, yep. Cool. Yeah, so great build. And if you're interested in following suit and building a trellis like that and kind of learning about pruning and training tomatoes, it's a great video. Definitely check it out. It'll be linked in the description, just like all the builds will. So thanks very much, Stephen, for posting that. Really great to see. Yeah, remember it next season. Yeah, for sure. Next up is a build from Jamie, and this is a 10 by 20 pergola build. He said it's very simple. And we got to see the screen. Oh, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see the build, Jake. Yeah. This, let's just go back. Uh, this is Jamie, <laughs> and he shared in the Maker Pipe Facebook group a 10 by 20 pergola that he wow. made. Uh, it looks like a really beautiful space. I always love to see. When I had a house, I was not very good with the landscaping, so I always appreciate <laughs> seeing people that you know, take care of their property and have like a, a nice sanctuary, I guess you can call it. They kind of hang out. You got a fountain in there. And it takes a lot of time. I mean, there's different. You take for granted like <laughs> how much time it actually mm -hmm. takes, you know, to to make a garden like that. For sure. And there's even different types of stones. It's like color coordinated. So, you know, it's really cool. Um, but this pergola that he made, basically, you know, it's 10 foot wide and 20 foot long. So we can see you know, in the corners, just like with the trellis we looked at, there's 90 degree connectors, you know, just has the vertical and then the cross pipes. And I guess that's just a solid piece, a 10 foot stick. Hmm. And uh, and then 20 foot long. I don't know how it's connected in the middle. Maybe there's a coupling in here somewhere. I know there's a four-way connector. So about 10 feet down in the middle, there's another four-way connector, which is similar to the 90, except it allows you to basically keep going with your run and... So those are in the middle. It also adds the cross brace across uh, here. You can see uh, this is a great diagram of how he made everything. And then it looks like you use six, ha six each half inch rebar. So that's just probably hammered in the ground, similar to what we talked about a second ago, where it's hammered into the ground in the corners and um, the verticals just slid over top of it. And then uh, he's got a sunshade attached to the top. Looks like linked one out from Amazon, 10 by 20, 70% sunshade. And then he's using the ball bungees, which are a really great method for materials with grommets. So you can basically just pull it tight, attach it to the frame, and then those ball bungees are really handy to just kind of pull it tight and secure it. Um, yeah, it's a really great build. And uh, I said it's holding up so far in 25, <coughs> mile, 25 mile an hour plus winds. Oh, good. Because I, I was concerned. Yeah. To be I, honest, I mean, like a full 10 foot length and using all those lengths, I was a little bit concerned about the stability of it just from what I've experienced. Yeah, for sure. I Maybe mean, it takes the sunshade down, you know, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. you got to watch out for that. Especially, yeah, for sure. I mean, because you've got the rebar and the verticals that helps the vertical supports. But, you know, usually we recommend maybe like five foot before you add or to add another brace. So, right. Um, um, Which would kind of kill the. Mm -hmm. the vibe and there's some spots he could do it but i think that's like that's one of the good things is you know you could make a build you could make the overall structure and then add reinforcement as you need and that's kind of that's a lot of times how i build you know i'll get the outside and then figure out where it needs more strength and just add some bracing um you know granted i've got a lot of connectors at my disposal right if you're trying to plan it out <coughs> excuse me you're trying to figure that out but you know, could be approach for you if you're not crunched on time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a good thing. Because, like, you know, you can add some 45-degree bracing in the corners if you needed it. But, you know, as you said, it's holding up in 25-mile-an-hour winds, so maybe it doesn't need maybe. extra braces. Yeah. And another thing to throw out there, um, just, you know, FYI, if you do buy extra connectors at the end of your project, you end up don't needing them, like some bracing, go ahead, you can send them back, and we'll give you a refund if they're unused. So... Just throw that out there if that helps, you know, uh, if you end up not using all your connectors. Yeah, for sure. 
that might be worth putting on like the order page or something that, or you know somewhere just for people to know i think so because like we almost never uh have a problem with taking new connectors back right mm-hmm. relatively unused connectors uh it's always something that we'll do so we really might you know tell people that up front a little bit more might yeah. be helpful for folks yeah, I think so. I, I talked to somebody last week who was building a, a canopy, and they were on a time crunch. Like they only had a couple of days to build it, and we were kind of going through. It was a pretty large canopy, um, so uh, I was mentioning, you know, just I would get a few extra of each of the main connector types you're using in the build, and then whatever you don't use because it's on a time crunch. You wanted to overnight the package, so like, yeah, if if it came down to it, having those few extra that you have to send back, yeah, uh, would be a lot better than just the whole project, you know, not working out. Dusty Steele, he's in the chat. Uh, good morning again. He said, I would keep the extras for the next build. Oh, nice. Like yep. how you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, good morning to Greg and Kevin as well in the chat. Hey, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. So that's a great build from uh, from Jamie. Really appreciate posting that in the Maker Pipe Facebook group. Looks like a great build and beautiful space and hope it continues to work out well for you. Kevin, too. He says, extras go in a bin for the next project. Nice. I like it. That's cool. I have a have a that maker pipe tool back box that we saw a little while ago. <laughs> that was always cool. I was jealous of their. I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about, but yeah, it's pretty cool. With all the extras, I remember that. Yeah, and it was like sorted by connector type. There right. was extra hardware, little hack, little bin like section. Or That's what we need. I know. We need like the ultimate roll around maker pipe connector shop. Mm. You know. Yeah. That we can just uh, roll up to where we're building. Yeah, for sure. We've theorized a like a build station for live streams where you you know like step on a foot pedal and there's like an electric burr <laughs> and then we have a, a bender attached and we've got like conduit and like hacks and all the stuff we would need to go buy like quarter twenty bolts all that just organized. It's currently in development. Yeah, that's like the the dream setup for building. <laughs> but thanks, Jamie, for posting that. Let's uh, look at the next build, which is an overhead dust collection arm. And this was shared a little while back. This is a channel, Southern Style DIY. Definitely check him out. And he was making a dust collection arm for his shop, and which is a you know a pretty common thing. We have all kinds of sawdust uh, as you're you know cutting wooden things. And yeah, as you can see, <laughs> it gets kind of a mess, especially if you throw it around. Um, but you know he's he's in kind of a, a small space here, a small workshop. So he wanted to kind of utilize space in uh, a different way and make a, a collection arm that he could attach a hose to, and kind of move it around and swivel it around. And he went through a couple of iterations using some of the DIY flange methods. Um, we went through a couple of iterations. He first wanted to build one that would swivel here and in the middle, and um, he, he took the bands off the connector so it could swivel, which is a, a good technique. Um, but ran into some issues with, uh, you know, like half the connector being secured and the other half on the adjustable angle connector because you're trying to achieve the hinge. So some of the pipes uh, that needed to be secure were loose and vice versa. So kind of had to redesign it a little bit, but he goes kind of deep into how he built it, the first prototype and kind of different things he was trying. And then ultimately changed the design a little bit. And then I think he also drilled through the connectors, as you could see, to add some self-tapping screws to the connectors where those where he needed the, the extra security on those and then I think he ended up just changing it completely and you can see here um, here it is when it's finished so he just turned it into one big triangle instead of two triangles and then those two pipes can can hinge on that vertical there and then it created uh, a dust collection arm that kind of folds up into the wall and then he could grab onto it swivel it out nice he's got the hose attached to it and there you go. Huh. Dust collection arm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've been following this as well because he's posted a few iterations on social, mm-hmm. I think. And yeah. I think it's a good good kind of, you know, documenting the thought process of how you go about figuring out how to do something like this. Because we haven't seen too many builds like this that I remember. Mm-hmm. And it's unique to his scenario. So how do you make this relatively complex thing strong and light and Mm -hmm. work for him so i think it's rad that he found a solution and documented the whole thing yeah for sure because i was looking at the first version and i was like yeah i mean 
you know, being wor- worked with our connectors a lot, I mm-hmm. could see where it wasn't really happening, but uh, it's a good reference for other people trying to figure it out, how it works and where, you know, where your design should go. Right. Especially with a lot of motion and a lot of moving parts on things. Yeah. And, and even included free plans. So if you have a, a shop and you want to add a dust collection arm that's similar, you know, I would imagine you could just customize those pipe links kind of to your space. Uh, so definitely check out YouTube channel, Southern Style DIY. And I think it's the same on TikTok and Instagram as well. And you can see he's got the, uh, the build plans and everything. So definitely check that out if you're interested in doing something similar. Thanks so much for posting that. Next up, we've got a build from Darren. And this is a review on the T-Connector. Thanks so much for, for leaving the review. Glad you had a good experience. Uh, kind of goes into some different things. And uh, Darren built all kinds of different things. But this is one of the projects that he shared. And this is a, a light grid stand made with conduit. Uh, nice. And I think he said he was using C stands, which <clears throat> can be kind of expensive. And, and they're, you know, it's worth it for the lights. You, you, know, you know, you have a strong solution for the lights. But I think he was using C stands for for different things um, besides the lights just because he didn't want to spend a bunch of money on all these different stands. So um, he was using the C stands, but now he said the C stands are clear because he's built these with maker pipe. And I believe this is, uh, is it like a backdrop or a, a fill light or something? I think this is just a grid stand. So like a light grid stand. Uh, so normally you can put light grids on um, the front of like a soft box or something to kind of direct the light more uh, and kind of keep it from spilling out of the edges. And I think in like larger studio. Oh, yeah. yeah. Think, okay. So it cuts. Sorry to interrupt oh, you. Good. So it's cutting the light mm-hmm. with with the paneling. I was thinking LEDs went on this, but it's just right. to diffuse the light a li- or to cut the light a little bit, direct the light. I think so. I'm pretty sure. I was trying to look into it a little bit because, you know, we have lights in here, but they're really small. And I think for large studio applications, this is something that you use even like even outdoors, like with the sun, just to, you know, have more direction, a directional light on a subject. Right. And, oh, okay, that's that grid material. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. And it directs the light. Right. And you got that big window there. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's helping with the sunlight. Anyway, okay, now I, I got you. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure either, and I could still be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's used for. Uh, but you can see it's got the, the frame for the, the grid. I don't, I don't know if you, you buy that or if you made that too. Uh, but it's just uh, the frame holding the grid. And then he's uh, using some, looks like some of the, I forget what those are called. Um, oh, yeah. The the like C-stand arm right. connectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can adjust it. And then they have like a slot for, you know, different sizes of oh, neat. rods. But he's got that attached to the end of the conduit so he can secure the, the light grid panel to that. Yeah, what are those called? I'm not sure. Uh, if you want to look it up, I'll yeah. keep going. Um, but then you can see he's got uh, telescoping connectors here on the sides uh, using half inch EMT and three quarter inch EMT. And um, so he can raise this up and down. It goes down. He's got the 90 degree connectors here in the middle. And this is a good technique to keep in mind when using 90s. You know, the first two builds we looked at, the trellis and the, the pergola, both had 90s kind of, you know, kind of oriented vertically. So it had a pipe in the middle and then a pipe coming out of the ends at 90s. But a good thing to keep in mind for projects is you can actually do this, kind of flip it over, and that's what he's done here. So instead of it having a vertical going straight through, it's the horizontal pipe going straight through here, and then he's got the 90-degree pipes coming out the sides and connecting everything. And then he's using uh, casters (coughs) and roll it around, which is really helpful in a studio situation, and uh, just a really great build. Okay, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Uh grip head. Grip head. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you pull it up on the internet? Yeah. yeah. I think it's neat too. I don't know if this is the right one, but look up uh C stand grip head. Let's see. Adorama has some for nineteen ninety nine. Where is uh well that's an interesting one. I like this one. I think this is the one on Adorama. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Nice. I wonder if we can see the bottom. Okay, so that's the bottom for the action that goes normally on the top of the C stand. Right. And so I imagine, oops, sneak peek there, that build. Ah. <laughs> uh, the half inch EMT must fit inside that really well. Right. And it, you can tell, I mean, it looks like it might be the perfect size for half inch. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, you can, you know, use the, the set screw um, knob there to kind of tighten that, close that if you need to a little bit more. 
so he's got that at the top, which is really cool because, you know, doing that, you could basically use all kinds of different camera gear. And that's what he said he's doing. He's making stands for Likert panels and I think some lighting uh, and some different things like different tables, light supports. And um, so it's really cool to hear that he's able to use it for different things and said it's a great solution for saving money for camera. camera right. Sets. And I, I think at, I mean, that uh, grip head uh, thing mm -hmm. that, <laughs> uh, I mean, that solves a unique problem mm -hmm. when building where you right. have to like control that angle and keep that angle really rigid. I mean, of course we have the adjustable connector, but this is like cast in place. There's teeth that lock it. Yeah. Those teeth right there that mm -hmm. lock it in. Um, and it really can grip oh, hard right. at, at a specific mm -hmm. angle and lock it in place. So I think that solves, cause look at that. I mean, that's used to support mm -hmm. quite a bit of weight and it's not going to rotate. So, um, I think that's a neat thing to, to you know have in the in the toolbox yeah for sure and i think in this on this situation and it's like threaded onto the c-stand maybe mm. um so you know even utilizing the threaded pipe inserts i'm like sure a there's a bunch gold. of them yeah. yeah if if somebody finds one i mean that that really works well with conduit you know because i don't think that's probably the best option uh yeah look at that that's great um, something like that and that's even now th those are probably skinnier, mm -hmm. but if you had that, and it was for you know close to the diameter of conduit, eight bucks, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, that's really cool. So if anybody finds something like that, you know, link it down below, give us a holler. We'd love to see uh, if you've experienced that and it fits and it works. Yeah, definitely. We we kind of geek out over camera stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. You know, share your findings with us if you find another solution. Or more solutions, I guess. So that's really cool. Thanks so much, uh, Darren, for posting that. Really glad to hear you had a good experience and that's working well for you. Thanks so much for posting. Next up, we've got a, a video from and project from our friend at MKE Gadgets. Done uh, quite a few videos, done some hack roundups and some different solution, uh, different solutions that he's made with Conduit and some just really creative things overall. Uh, we, we talked about him, I think, maybe not last week, a couple weeks ago, he's made project feet with uh, hockey pucks and he's just really creative he likes to turn in uh, turn some you know uh, street finds people throwing stuff out turns it into to cool builds uh, but this week he shared a video and this is a e-bike charging stand that he made um, as you can see here and he's using maker pipe and conduit for kind of the base structure uh, this is kind of a prototype he made it's really simple it's two four six connectors total um, and you know just a few pieces of conduit and he really did something cool we'll look at in a second for uh something we've talked about a lot that i'm excited for but <laughs> you can see this stand that he made and he's using some of his 3d printed uh pipe feed that he's made in the past he's got a lot of great 3d models and accessories he's done um but he basically added a piece of plywood to that and then he built some different things here so he's got a spool kind of built in on this side for an extension cord that extension cord runs directly into this electrical box. He's got it set up where two e-bikes can charge at once. The chargers are kind of nestled here on these this kind of base that he built for them. And then they plug into the electrical outlet. He's got, um, let's see. Do we see the e-bikes? No, he, he said he made it for a client. So this oh, is okay. somebody commissioned him to make this. And this is sort of a prototype, he said. Uh, still working on it, but he's also got some, some USB ports here for charging other things as well nice um what's really cool is this this back leg swivels so it's like quick depo deployable and um oh, kind of like an, an easel sort of thing right with the chain mm -hmm. and we've talked about doing something like this in the past and like making um oh, what are they called tripod yeah what's the one for like woodworking saw saw horses oh yeah and then being able to swivel the legs but not have them go too far mm -hmm. so what he's done is he's used the conduit hanger straps and then put chain between the bolt and the nut on the conduit hanger strap. So it's secured to the conduit, but this chain. Uh, oh, that's super smart. Yeah. So this chain, you know, moves and you can swivel it. And the chain, of course, you know, loosens as you can see there or tightens whenever you move the back leg. And you just clip it on. Yep. And you just clip it on. And so you can kind of flat pack it. Oh, no. I was thinking it was one whole strap, but it's it's one of the standoff conduit hangers. Now right. I see. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, one of the conduit hanger straps there. Gotcha. I don't think I have. I used them in the video last week, but I think I took them back to the shop. Um, 
So yeah, he's got those attached to the condo and then the, the chain. Awesome. Uh, to make a kind of a safety thing uh, or like a latch, you know, to keep it from going too far, which is really smart. And we've talked about that in the past, and that's a great way to do it. Um, this is like ultimate cord management, charger management. Yeah. Because you don't, I mean, you know, just having them all over the place, getting tangled, mm -hmm. never in the spot that you need them. Where's right. the cord? Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. That stinks. And then this is just uh, some nice organization that makes it portable and all together. Yeah, for sure. And you can flat pack it, take it on the go if you're, you know, you got a long oh, yeah. expedition. You're traveling. Mm -hmm. You want to set up your charging station at the campground or wherever you're at. I like it. And you said he kind of designed it to be small and compact and made, made so it can kind of sit in the middle. Two bikes can pull up on each one on each side. And then, you know, you've got the, the charging and everything for them. Nice. It's a really cool project. Uh, definitely check out MKE Gadget's channel. Show him some love. He does all kinds of cool things with uh, with Conduit and not just Conduit and Maker Pipe. He's yeah. done all kinds of amazing things. So Awesome channel. Check it out. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, MKE, for sharing that. Always great to see. Next up is a cool project from Thomas, and this is a, a set design for their church. And we saw something like this a long time ago, uh, but this is something uh, new. They recently just finished, or they're not finished with it yet, I don't think, so it's still a work in progress. But you can see they're building a massive stage like kind of set design using conduit and maker pipe. Uh, and it's really cool. There's a ton of connectors in there. It looks like that's a model, I think. Does that look like a model to you? It looks like a rendering. Yeah, it looks like a rendering. Um, it's so hard to tell these days. I mean, renderings I look so good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even like just your average Joe on YouTube is using After Effects and stuff to <laughs> yeah, like trick people out. But so it's still a work in progress, but you can see there's a lot of connectors. And it's basically just made, made to be, you know, kind of like an art piece. It's kind of a set design, but it looks like they've got some. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a rendering because we've got, I can see that. I thought that was a real person at first, but <laughs> you can tell it's a rendering. Um, but you can see they've got the uh, the lights attached on the vertical or the kind of slanted bars and some lanterns and things. So it looks like it's going to be a really cool project. Um, a lot of connectors, um, but really cool. Two by four. We we're going to use two by fours, but we switched to using EMT and Maker Pipe for reusable lighting frame. It's going to be 16 <laughs> feet tall and wrap both sides of the stage. Post more once it's completed. So yeah. Really cool project, Thomas. Looks like a, a great plan, a great model. We definitely love to see it when you get it finished. Thanks so much for posting that. Next up, we've got a project from uh, Serendipity Sue, another longtime Maker Pipe friend. And uh, he's done all kinds of cool stuff in the garden and uh, a lot of stuff with e bikes. He made an adjustable solar bike uh, rack. So it's on the back of his e bike and it moves with the sun. That was really interesting. Definitely check that out. But recently, he's been doing a project with solar, and this is a solar hot tub. So he DIY'd this hot tub, as you can see here, using a stock tank. Um, it's kind of a, I guess it's not like an actual like steel stock tank, but it's, um, I guess it's like plastic or something, you know, just like a Rubbermaid uh, stock tank. Yeah. I think he said it's 150 gallons. And what he's doing is really clever. Um, so basically, he's got the, the, um, the stock tank, and then he's got this 200 foot black hose and that water is running through and basically he did a series of tests to kind of see he got a $20 Amazon uh, hot water pump as you can see here hot water heater and he basically incorporated that into the system water for, pump what's that water pump yeah because it's not heating it it says it's, hot water heater circulation pump flow well yeah but it's just moving the water okay Right, like the coils in the sun is what's heating it. I if see. I understand that correctly, mm -hmm. I think so. Okay, yeah, you're probably right. That makes sense. I guess a twenty dollar hot water heater is probably a not something that. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he he got that the pump, and that basically I think he's using pool water, which is really cool to kind of utilize that pool water. <laughs> nice filters through. Got two hundred foot black hose. And basically, he built a framework to, to kind of store the hose, uh, as you can see here. Put some, like, acrylic over top of it. Um, and then he built the stand with maker pipe and conduit to wow. hold that up and angle it at the sun just to kind of take advantage of the sun and wherever it's at during the day. And using that to heat up the water for this hot tub, this DIY oh, hot tub. Wow. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah, for sure. It, Super cool. And then he's got some uh, like insulation here he cut out to kind of match the top 
just to kind of make a little cover to keep it. Mm-hmm. And he said his goal was to get it up to 103 degrees. And uh, he said since it's inside their greenhouse, the greenhouse was 120 inside. So between that and the pump and everything, he said that the the it's working well. He said he I think he started at 68 degrees and got it up like up to 90, uh, just by using the solar panel or the solar shower um, or like you know the the stand with the the hose and everything. Right. And uh, and yeah, turned it into a, a solar powered hot tub. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, for sure. And he even goes into this one a little bit. This is I don't know if he's using it for this necessarily, but he built this in the past. Uh, it's kind of their uh, they, they, I think he and his wife go on some adventures and they do some camping and things. So he made a really cool adjustable stand. Uh, that's a whole separate video that he did. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And the e-bike charger trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to harness the sun. Yeah. He made this amazing uh, e-bike trailer that has a, a solar panel that articulates to find the sun as you ride. Yeah. So to charge the bike, <laughs> really wild. Yeah, um, it's pretty pretty cool to see. Yeah, but I love this too. This is really cool, and you could, I mean, you know, a if you need a hot tub, but if you just need like an outdoor shower with some warm water, mm-hmm. right? Like if you if you have well water or even city water that's coming out of the ground, it's cold, yeah. and then you run it through that solar loop, warm it up a bit. That's a great summertime outdoor shower. Definitely, I like that. That's a lot of, a lot of cool possibilities there. Yeah, not really a ton of expensive materials or anything. Um, you know, just that hose and and uh, and everything. But yeah, I pulled this up. This is the e-bike trailer. So you can see he's riding down the road. The sun's coming. Uh, yeah, I should go back a little bit farther. You can kind of see it better here. Uh, let's see. You can. There's, I know there's a shot of it uh, kind of moving. So he's going down the road. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and it flips sides. So because you can see the shadows mm-hmm. and the sun's on the right here and it flipped to that side. I <laughs> love yeah. it. Yeah. And so you can charge while you're riding and it just moves. So yeah, done some really cool stuff with solar and, uh, and this project's no different. Really cool. Uh, so thanks so much serendipity Sue for sharing that really great to see. And if you want to make a DIY solar hot tub, definitely check out that video. Next up is a build from Lance and this is a blazer bikini top. So he said, nobody makes a top like this for blazers. There isn't an off-the-shelf solution. It's a beautiful blazer. It's a really nice truck. Um, yeah, that is cool. Yeah, really nice truck. Um, and I think he said his daughter sits in this back seat here, and without the top, you kinda, you're kind of you just you know subject to the sun. Uh, and they've got some nice shade up front, um, but back in the back, there isn't anything. So he made this, uh, this bikini top and this frame for it with Maker Pipe and Conduit. Nice. And there's some cool things incorporated into it here. Um, he's using the end clamps, which I thought was really cool. Um, you know, we've talked about that. So we have the, the adjustable angle connector. You've got the puzzle piece that attaches here, and you've got the end clamp. And they're kind of two separate connections, so you can hinge it. But you can kind of take the puzzle piece clamp off and use that for different things, like mounting surfaces. And then the end clamp, uh, people have been using it for situations like this, where you need basically a mounting point on the end of conduit. So he's basically done that here. I don't know if this is if this is maybe a commercial solution. Not a commercial, but just... It looks like some sort of extruded aluminum rail mm-hmm. of, of some sort. Yeah, and I don't know if he custom made those. It looks, it looks maybe like it because there's some specific ones here for the top and everything. That's the best picture we got. Uh, yeah, there's not really a close-up of everything. That's the closest one we have. Um, but you could imagine where that's like some angle iron, some aluminum mm-hmm. angle, right? That yeah. you can get pretty much anywhere. You know, that might work too. And I imagine there's probably some like holes in the bed already in the bed rails, kind of like we looked at with builds last week. Right. Um, so that you can just kind of utilize to mount the the, um, the bar to that you make. And then from there, you know, he kind of drilled holes in that. And then that's where he used the bolts through that uh, bracket into the end clamp to, you know, add attachment points on the ends of the frame and then going up, he's got some nice bins here. There's a coupling in the middle to kind of connect the two halves. And, uh, yeah, this looks really great. I can't tell if there's a pipe going up to the top there. I don't think you need it. Just tension it over. Yeah. Cause then he's got the top secured and I imagine that I'm not too familiar with these older blazers or not, but I think they have kind of like Jeep kind of style where you can take the, the roof off or the fabric off. Well, okay. So, what do you think that blazer like price range? Where do you think that's at? Like now, like what's yeah, worth like now? Because na- 
you know, I grew up and I rode in those kind of blazers, Mm -hmm. right? And like, they were cool and all, but they weren't, you know, an expensive car, not, not like a, not looked at as a collector car. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting kind of old here, (laughs) but, and I, and I was, I was looking at, um, you know, the Jeep, uh, what are they? Um, Jeep Wagoneers. They have like the wood panel, fake Mm -hmm. wood panel on the side. The, the, like the old Jeep Wagoneers. Uh I was looking at one of those and you know, they were never like a nice Jeep at all. It was kind of just like that family sedan Jeep, Mm -hmm. like 30 or (laughs) $40,000 now. It's absolutely nuts. And, and I I feel like this falls kind of into the same category. So what do you think this is? I know you're Googling it, but like I figured we cheated. You cheated? (laughs) I did. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to guess. Okay. Because, um, I want to say like, I mean, that's really nice. Yeah. Especially with the maker pipe. Mm -hmm. That adds quite a bit. (laughs) Quite a bit of value there. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go higher than I would think. 30K. Okay. If you're in the chat, we're going to give you a second. If you're in the chat, post your post your guess in the chat. Yeah. What is this thing worth today? Yeah. Because like Dave said, it's, you know, it could be surprising because it, it, it's amazing to see things like that, like Pokemon cards. Like every kid had Pokemon cards in the 90s and even before that. Actually, I don't know when Pokemon came out, but it doesn't matter. People threw them away, no, they treated them a, like dirt. They, they weren't around in the 90s. No? No. Not not in like you're gonna don't Google it and prove me wrong. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Hands are off the keyboard. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, probably they were around. Maybe I was just not into a, in tune with them. But Dusty likes it. He says cool blazer and build. So nice. you know, give us a guess. But I think what I was getting to is Pokemon cards. Every kid had them, took them to school, ripped them up, playground. And now some of them are selling for hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. Yeah, uh, for sure. It's crazy. Dusty said, I have a two-door Jeep XJ, and it's gone up a ton over the years. I could see it going for 30, 40 K. Oh, nice. What's what's an XJ? Uh, it's like Is that Cherokee? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's oh. like the early 2000s Cherokees. Yeah. Right on, Dusty. I had one of them, too. Nice. Actually, that was a four-door, but it was a Jeep Cherokee. Yeah. Green. Hunter Green. Nice. Okay. Are you ready? Well, yeah. even if you're not, I just showed you anyway. So, <laughs> so there's all kinds of different. This is a uh, classics dot auto trader. Auto okay. Trader classic. So this is like a 1986. This one's fifty thousand. Oh my gosh! Probably all original, seventy three thousand miles. Oh wow! Here's one for twenty two. Okay. Looks like it's restored a bit. Had some different things. Some of these like classic low rider restoration resto mods. Yeah. Forty three, fifty. This is another, looks like... See, that looks kind of like, you know, you take the top off the back. Mm-hmm. What's that one? Yeah, 48. Okay, well, that's really nice. Yeah. So, yeah, 30, 35. Yeah. It's possible. I it's all in so. the condition. For sure. And I imagine, like, how original it is and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. They do look cool now, especially they with are. the top off. Yeah. That is sweet. Yeah, it's really nice. For sure. That falls in that same category. And like, you know, obviously the Land Cruisers, Mm -hmm. Toyotas, they're super popular and expensive now. Yeah, for sure. I like this one. Yeah. What is this? A a Blazer? Yeah. K5 Blazer, I think. Um, Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Because like Broncos, they're Mm -hmm. super popular. They kind of hit the collector market for a while now. But Blazer, I like it. Yeah, some of those early... Broncos are gnarly uh, in price now. Like some, uh, it seems like there was like a certain year range, and then they just once they crossed over a threshold, now they're just crazy. Uh, people buy them and restore them. It's but, like once it hits like the popular, mm-hmm. you know, popular culture, and yeah. people start <laughs> eyeing up some, then and then everybody gravitates toward them, towards yeah. them, and then it just spikes in price. Probably. I wonder what I always wonder. Like, what is that now? Like, what's being sold right now? Oh yeah, that in right. Forty years, it's going to be like what? What are we? What are we treating like trash? Right, not trash, but maybe. But right, what are we just like? Oh, that's just the car everybody has, and then in forty years, it'll be worth fifty thousand, <laughs> or yeah, hundred thousand, or whatever. Warehouse, whatever you know, like guess what that <laughs> is, and put a bunch of uh, like what Ki- Kia Souls. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't think so. 
Yeah, I, I mean, back but, in the day, they were selling Kia Souls, buy one, get one free. So whoever <laughs> took advantage of that in 20, 30 years are going to be. But that's what's crazy is like, you know, will you like in 30 years be like, I remember when oh, yeah. Kia Souls were buy one, get one free. <laughs> and now they're like a collector's item. Because the Wagoneer is a perfect example of that, right? Yeah. You in the in the 90s, you would not be stoked to have a Wagoneer by any stretch mm-hmm. of the imagination, right? Like right. the... The the Cherokees, the XJ, like uh, Dusty was saying, that mm-hmm. that was cool. The Wranglers, obviously, but not a Wagoneer. Yeah. Dusty said, uh, once there's a movie with that specific vehicle, or a, a specific vehicle, then it goes up in price. <laughs> that's definitely oh, true. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Some, like, you know, popular movie star is yeah. rolling around in a custom, and then, then it pops off. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day with uh, Top Gun. With um, oh, that motorcycle, the motorcycle. Yep, I was looking up to see what that was, and I imagine everybody because everybody wants to be like Maverick, <laughs> right? The Navy, you know, pilot, like you know, because think about that motorcycle's popularity. Probably when the movie came out, it was new, mm-hmm. right? So that like everybody wanted Maverick's motorcycle then, mm-hmm. probably stayed pretty popular, maybe died off a little bit, you know, as 80s weren't as cool, and then uh. Now, probably that's the hot bike. Yeah, probably so. I looked it up. It was cool. I mean, it was a, it's a Kawasaki. It was it was cool to read a little bit about it. It's like the early predecessor of like the current sport bikes people. Was it a like over a thousand? Pull it up. I think it was a G six thousand or something. Here, let me look it up. Six thousand? <laughs> not not six thousand. <laughs> I think I think I think it was called. It had six in the name. Let me just look it up before I keep talking. Uh. Imagine a six thousand cc motorcycle. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen one day. Oh, it's like those... Uh, uh, the top, when I said what motorcycle, I, I searched what motorcycle in the auto feel. Uh, the first one is what motorcycle is in <laughs> Top Gun 2, Top Gun Maverick. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. It's a Ninja GPZ-900R. Okay. Uh, let's see here. It's definitely got that, like... 80s style to it yeah really cool but it's like an early predecessor to all the ninja sure the ninja but like super bike mm-hmm. kind of early super bike i wonder if they, i wonder if I they have the really same one from oh my face is blocking it, it looks like oh, never mind. um i wonder if that's the original one from the movie i, I bet tom cruise kept the original one from the movie and has had it all these years oh that, yeah and this you is, would imagine yeah and I bet this is the same one from the original, because this is the original movie. All right. I want to uh, see a better picture of it, though. Okay. Uh, okay. That looks... Huh. Wow, it's even got a, a radiator. Huh. I guess, have bikes always had... No, because, like, my Honda no. doesn't have one. You've got an air-cooled Honda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is, li- <coughs> excuse me, liquid coal. 112 horsepower. Wow. 908 cc, 16 valve. Hmm. Interesting. Nice. I mean, Tom Cruise makes it look absolutely <laughs> amazing. Right. And that's, right. That's Going the down thing. the yeah. the airport tarmac, you know, in the, the, in the, the fighter sunset. The behind him flying over yeah. him. And- you could put him on a. Danger uh, Zone playing in the background. Honda Dream, and it'd be amazing. Or like a, I don't know what. Wagoneer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like Dusty was saying, I'm sure everybody now is, uh, loves these motorcycles and Google it. And, yeah, uh, true. Dusty's speaking the truth. Yeah. Kevin said, I have a 92 Ford Ranger. Book value is 995 and three people have offered me 2K in cash for it. But I love driving it. Nice. Uh, that's that truck value. Yeah. 92 Ford Ranger. I like that body style. It's more of the boxier style. I had a 98 Ranger that I drove around for a little bit, but it True. was it was kind of the round body red, design. Red. But, but I like, yeah. I like the, the older ones that have the box shape. That thing did not shift well. No. And it, I remember whenever you borrowed it to pick up something and you thought the leaf spring like broke or shifted, and I was like, dude, yeah. I, I honestly don't care even if it did. I don't <laughs> think it did, but it was like a little offside uh, or offset or something Probably. yeah i thought i messed it up and it, that was that was uh ktm dirt bike 
Oh, I used yeah. KTM. Then we took it to Tennessee. You and oh, your, yeah. Me and your brother barely lasted. Yeah. I missed that thing. I shouldn't have sold it. Yeah. It, it would have been a nice one to just keep around and have. But anyway. Yeah, um, you probably sold it for $4,000, $5,000, huh? I, I let it go too cheap, I think. But you could have got more. I also ran it without oil for a while by accident. <laughs> uh, so it made some funky noises. But that's beside the point. <laughs> okay. Uh, Donald is in the chat was wondering the American Speedster bicycle is made from PVC. Could your fittings work for this instead of PVC? Oh, what is this? Uh, yeah, I'm interested in this. Uh, this is something I don't know anything about this. American Speedster bicycle. Let me look it up real quick. American Speedster bicycle. This might this might turn into a, a project. Uh, PVC. Let's see. Can't be done. Oh, <clears throat> I, we've seen this before, I think. Oh, that's out of PVC? It looks like it, like thick. It looks like it. That's basically a go-kart. Can we call that a bicycle? I don't know. <laughs> did I wanna, well, I we did. Yeah, I want one of those. <laughs> I want to roll around in that. <laughs> that would be sick. If we, <laughs> Next time we go to a trade show, <laughs> I'm going to roll around in that. That is... What is that? Is pedal that a fifty driven. gallon drum? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, That's amazing. Driven. Yeah, fifty five gallon drum. It says <laughs> <laughs> very safe and a barrel of fun. It says <laughs> that is so many possibilities. Yeah. Learn more. What are you crazy? Yeah, click I'm, on that. I'm afraid to click this. This is like your classic <laughs> click and get scammed button. Is it? I don't know. No, it's okay. If your child is too old for the Barbie Jeep and not quite ready for a Hummer, we offer the Speeder. Ah, uh, that's amazing. That is sick. Donald, this is great. You've turned us... Okay, so yeah, this we is can amazing. buy the kit or buy the plans. That'd be great. We buy the plans wow. and then convert it to conduit mm -hmm. and connectors. That'd be, that'd be a, a fun time. Oh, they said it's not hard to convert it into e-powered. You that replace the right rear wheel and should require no modifications to the design. That's V2. Yeah. Because we've been wanting to build a go-kart. Mm -hmm. Jake's, gosh, Jake has been wanting to build a go-kart forever. Can't be done. Can't be done. So I don't know if I can get behind a go-kart, but I can definitely get behind the uh, the Speedster barrel car. <laughs> yeah. There's, this is like the... This is like the barrel boat. We have we saw a rain barrel boat a couple of weeks ago. Problem is, neither of us can fit in that. I know. Bailey would have to, she would have to pilot it. Yeah. I mean, or, maybe if we, we like... a bigger drum. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple barrels, like two <laughs> barrels welded together. Oh, gosh. Ah, these are dreams. The soapbox racer. We should have a maker pipe soap comp, like the soapbox competition. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we should. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Did he? Oh my gosh! What's that Red Bull thing where oh they go downhill? That's like the. Oh, what are they? I forgot what they call that. It's the. Um... Look up. Um, I don't know what it's called. Red Bull soapbox, but reverse. Uh, Google that because there's this. One, I saw this one clip. You know where it looks like the guys driving backwards. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely hilarious. You got to find it. Let's see. Um, Red but, Bull, so like, but he just like rewinded it. And, like, no, no, no. You got to see if you can find it. See if it comes up. Because uh, okay. it's like, it's pretty iconic. Uh, this is posted by Red Bull on Facebook. Uh, Something about like, it, it looks like he's towing a um, a trailer in mm -hmm. reverse. Do trailer oh, reverse. Caravan racing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, click on that one. All right, we gotta because it looks like the guy's backing up a trailer <laughs> going downhill, and it looks amazing. And and yeah, most skilled soapbox <laughs> driver ever. Nice. Can we not skip that? No. There it is. <laughs> He's backing that up, going down wow. the chorus. <laughs> that's the most dad thing I've ever seen. Oh, that's amazing! Like He's this got the guy, classic like. Grab the seat behind you and turn around and look. Yeah. No mirrors, no side mirrors. 
best wow trailer backer upper rv backer upper oh ever. my gosh you like took that curve perfectly and everything wow this guy's my hero nice yeah that's really cool how did he do it i don't know that's amazing yeah somebody was piloting it he had somebody in the stands with no him. oh no no, I I shouldn't. Don't crush crush yeah. my dreams. I shouldn't have taken his skills away. Yeah, don't start. take his skills away. That was awesome. Well, cool. Well, thanks, uh, Donald. Gravity racer. We've had somebody make a gravity racer. Um, that's some cool. We've had a go kart. That's uh, true. Oh, that that's yeah, old school build. Yeah, that's one of the first. I mean, I don't. I wasn't even like a part of Maker Five at that point. It it was, it like, was one of the early. first like big builds that a community member gave us pictures from mm -hmm. and it was such a cool thing because it was a, a a father and a son mm -hmm. right and they built this thing and uh documented there was a youtube video really cool um this, look at this this is like before the minis this is that like, is before the minis this is the lego the technics yep for the prototyping I mean, that has to have come into our minds as far as coming up with the minis, right? Mm -hmm. Like that planted the seed for sure. Yeah. I remember we talked about it. Um, there were like certain connectors that we couldn't quite recreate. With the Technics, yeah. Mm -hmm. We looked. Yeah. But, but yeah, this is cool. Is that is that that's for steering there in the middle? Or no, that, that was a brake. The heck just unplugged. I don't know. That's always the worst feeling. <laughs> like, I don't have so many things plugged in. Who the heck knows? <laughs> right. But what did you say what that was? Sorry. That was the brake. Oh, okay. Nice. Was that the brake? I think that was the brake. Yeah, it looks brakeish. Uh, Maybe it dragged on the, the bottom? Yeah. Uh, we can see. I think this video shows it going down the hill. Uh, 17, yeah. Maybe sped up a little bit, but <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. I didn't know there was like a whole walkthrough and everything of it. Yeah. Oh, and then cool. the the steering oh. is with the feet. It just pit that whole axle pivots, and he can oh, that's pushes. Smart. Yeah, I mean, because steering is one of the hardest parts of it. Yeah. Right, because you got to do all the linkage. But oh, there's a yeah perfect example of it. That's how you steer it. Yeah. Super smart. Really cool. Slap a barrel on that thing, and <laughs> we got a speedster. In a Harbor Freight go-kart engine, and you're on the move. This is not build advice. <laughs> this does not constitute. <laughs> build at your own risk. Yeah. Um, but going back to the question at hand, Donald, it is possible, I think, to turn that into, to use a conduit for that. That would be amazing. Yeah. For sure. Let us know what uh, what you're interested in, Donald. I mean, is it just something that you that you saw that you're interested? In? Are you planning on building one? Would you like to build one? Have you built one? Let us know. Would you like to build us one? <laughs> <laughs> we would need more than one barrel. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to fit. Yeah, I would need at least two barrels just for myself. At I least. Think. Yeah. <laughs> well, nice. Uh, really, really great to have everybody in the chat. Uh, Kevin said a lot of practice there for the backing up uh, soapbox. <laughs> yeah, skills. I'm sure somewhere in America exists a backing up competition. I, I would be shocked if there wasn't. There's a competition for everything. If not formal, definitely between dads. <laughs> yeah. Happens every weekend at the boat, I was about boat to say, dock. Yeah, I guess, I guess there is one. It's just held in every dad's head every <laughs> weekend across America. <laughs> every driveway, every boat dock. I like seeing the backing up fails on TikTok. Not that I could do any better, but mm. uh, it's always interesting. It is a skill. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, cool. Expect. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with us. As always, it's been a ton of fun. All the builds will be linked down below. And I uh, hope everybody has a good week. Thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with us. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Bye. <laughs> oh, yeah, I closed the thing. Okay. Well, you can look at the go-kart on their way out. <laughs> I closed the other tab. Are we muted? <laughs>